Okay, so John, please go on. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks. Uh, um, yeah, so today uh, I will speak about something a little bit different from uh, the two other lectures. Um, I'll um, explain the relation to certain arithmetic questions. Um, so let me just uh, set the stage. So um, the, the picture I want to describe is the following. You have a morphism from um, some smooth projective variety X uh, over yeah, to a curve B. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm interested in when there's a section. Uh, so, a, you know, a map from from B going the other way. Um, so there's a sort of famous result here due, due to Graeber, Harris, and Starr saying that if uh, if you have um, if the general fiber here is is rationally connected, then there's uh, then there exists a section. Um, yeah. So <laughs> this is a sort of a num number theoretic uh, statement. Um, if you if you think about what this means, well, um, it, it means that uh, if you take a rationally connected variety over the function field of this curve, then there exists a, um, a rational point over that uh, field. Um, and there's a condition here, namely that it's it's rationally connected, which means that uh, you can uh, you know basically join two uh, or any two general points by uh, a rational curve. So it's a sort of algebraic geometric um, analog of being path connected, I guess. Uh, but that's the condition and, and that's, and assuming that the general fiber is rationally connected, um, then, then we do have a section. So just sort of a, as a concrete example, um, if we consider the following equation, um, so it's a it's a quartic polynomial um, in uh, x zero up to x four, uh, and there's a t in there also. So um, I guess this would live in t four over k t. Uh, yeah, then this is a family of quartic uh, threefolds. So it's, it is rationally connected because it's it's fun also. There, do, there exist polynomials at p0 up to p4 that, uh, so that these uh, x's solve that equation. And a priori, that, that's not so obvious just by looking at the sort of form of that equation. It's, it's not obvious that these should, polynomials should, should exist. Okay, so this is obviously interested. In, uh, well, it's, it's interesting from the viewpoint of number theory that you, that you can sort of guarantee that you have solutions over, over the polynomial ring um, or the, the field of rational uh, functions. Um, yeah, and the, but this, um, this sort of question goes back much further than uh, Gray Harry Starr. Um, so it was asked by Sarah in, uh, in the letter to Grothendieck. Um, basically, well, it's the same conclusion uh, true if you have a variety over the, the function field of a curve. So k, k is the function field of a, of a curve here. Um, uh, assuming not that it's uh, rationally connected, but uh, um, that it has this sort of weaker uh, condition that all of the cohomology groups here vanish. So, um, yeah, so in, in particular, rationally connected varieties do satisfy this. Okay, um, that would be great, right? Because then, while well, this is sort of a, not, well, not that hard uh, condition to check and it, it would guarantee that you had a, a point defined over this function field. So uh, I'm not completely sure if uh, Sarah believed uh, that uh, such a statement should be true. He himself added that it, it's, uh, it's a bit optimistic. Um, but finding a, hard, uh, a counterexample is, is tricky. And uh, 
the first counterexample was found uh, 40 years later by um, Graeber Harris uh, uh, Maser Star um, and uh, also uh, Guillaume um, uh, Lafon. Uh, namely that there are there are Enrique surfaces over function fields of, of curves where there's no points. So more geometrically, there exists Enrique surface vibrations over curves where there's no section. Okay, so um, maybe that seems like it's the end of the story, but um, there was this very interesting question by Elena No saying, that, well, maybe looking for rational points over this field, maybe that's not the right thing. Maybe um, this condition here should imply that um, X admits a zero cycle of degree one. Um, yeah, so geometrically that means that, uh, well, we have a, this map from X to B and we, we look at sort of all, all curves that lie on X. And, uh, and geometrically, uh, and also the question is whether you can find multi-sections here of, of sort of co-prime degree. So the, the, this GCD here is known as the, the index of, of this vibration. But that's a much harder problem to contradict. Like and you, you can imagine that you, you had some sort of clever argument saying that there's no point on uh, on x but saying that sort of there, there are no no two curves uh, of co-prime degrees that's that's much harder because the these degrees could be very large but yeah anyway the, this is the main result for today um, we're going to show that this also has a negative answer um, and the geometric statement is the following so there are exists an Enrique surface vibration uh, over P1 even, so that every curve has even degree uh, over P1. So yeah, this uh, the GCD is, is uh, well, it's at least two. Um, every curve has, uh, has even degree over this space. Are there any questions about uh, the statement or the stuff so far? Uh, could you show the question of us now again? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so. Okay, thank you. So X, uh, sorry, K here is the function field of a curve. And the question is whether being sort of acyclic uh, implies that you have a zero cycle of degree one. Yeah. Okay. So basically, we're going to prove this result. And uh, yeah, first I should explain the relation to the integral Hodge conjecture. Um, and it's the following. Um, so there's a result by Colliot-Telen and Voisin showing that if you, if you do have uh, such a vibration or a, or a map from X to, to B with OS-cyclic fibers, so this means that these uh, cohomology groups are zero for, um, for I at least uh, one. Um, then the push forward map from H2 uh, to uh, of X of, to H2 of B is, is surjective. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, well, it, it means that there's a homology class which sort of looks like it should be a, a section because it has degree one on a, on a fiber. So that the if you take a class that maps to a generator, um, so this if you have a curve, then this is just z, and yeah, there is some class that maps to the generator, and that class has degree one on uh, on a fiber. Least, okay, so the, the point is that this homology class it it sort of looks like uh, it should be a, the the class of a section. So, in other words, you couldn't use topology to try to uh, argue that there's no section here because, uh, yeah, such topological sections, they, they sort of always exist. 
Okay, but that means that if we prove our main result, uh, namely that every curve has even degree over, over P1, well, then it means that that class cannot be algebraic um, because, because, all, because it has odd degree with uh, respect to this, um, uh, this map. So in the example here, we have a class uh, sigma, which um, has the property that four times sigma is algebraic, but sigma itself is not algebraic. Okay. Right, so um, yeah, back to the statement, we're going to, so basically the, this whole talk is going to be about proving this result, <laughs> um, which means that I have to construct for you uh, an Enrique surface vibration uh, and prove to you that every curve in X has even degree over P1. So it, it will be um, completely independent from the other lectures, except for we're going to use the sort of philosophy from uh, Collar's example that we're going to sort of try to use degeneration methods to, uh, to prove this statement here. But this is, <laughs> this is a degeneration which will be much more complicated. So in, in particular, we're, we're going to degenerate to uh, a special fiber which has many, many components. So, uh, so it's, it's more involved. Okay, but this is a very concrete talk. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to sort of describe this threefold in terms of equations and, and, uh, and yeah, it's, it's going to be very geometric. John. Okay, yeah. Um, just as a, a point of clarity, uh, when you have an Enrique surface vibration x1 to p1, mm -hmm. does that mean that x is an Enrique surface or that the fibers are? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it means that the fibers are Enrique surfaces. Yeah. Thank you. So you should think of it as an Enrique surface, but over the function field of P1. So um, yeah, you have some parameter T and then for each T you have an Enrique surface. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, so it's a threefold and it's the sort of total space of the vibration. Okay, so let's start with Enrique surfaces and, and then produce threefolds, which are Enrique surface vibrations. So, I mean, I, I guess you've uh, all seen Enrique surface before. Um, if you haven't, this is uh, sort of the main properties that we'll need. Uh, it's a surface which has fundamental group C mod two, and it has the property that's two times the canonical divisor is, is zero. And because of this, uh, we know that there's a universal cover, um, Z over S, and this is a K3 surface. So you can think of all Enrique surfaces as quotients of K3 surfaces. Okay, so for K3 surfaces, it's very easy to write down equations. Um, I mean, quartic surfaces, double covers, I mean, it's very explicit. Um, but for, for Enrique surfaces, there are not that many known projective models. So, um, I mean, of course, I, I, want you, I want to describe this threefold very explicitly, in even in terms of equations. And uh, yeah, for that reason, I, I really need sort of concrete equations to work with. And here, here, here's one way to see the equations of an Enrique surface. So we're, we're going to let S uh, be a surface uh, in P2 cross P2, a product of two predicted planes. And it's going to be the surface that's defined by the two by two minors of uh, this matrix here. So it's a two by three matrix and the, the entries are polynomials. Uh, so on P P2 cross P2, I have two sets of variables. I have uh, X's and, and Y's. And I build this matrix uh, by, sending, by saying that, well, these should be quadratic equations in the x's, and these should be quadratic equations in the y's. So if you want, uh, we have a product of projective spaces and we can talk about by degrees of polynomials. So this has uh, by degree two zero and this has by degree zero two. Okay, so if I choose these p's and q's to be completely general, then 
if I take the two by two minors of this matrix here, I get uh, something that's smooth. Uh, and it turns out that it's an Enrique surface. Okay, so at least this is sort of explicit. It's, I mean, the equations look like, uh, you know, the equations of a twisted cubic, but, but uh, it's a surface in P2 cross P2. Okay. Uh, yeah, so maybe I should actually give you the proof why this is uh, an Enrique surface, because it's not so cl uh, clear that, uh, that that surface satisfies these two conditions here. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to, to just give you the K3 cover. Um, and uh, yeah, so what you do is, is uh, well, instead of working on P2 cross P2, we can work on P5. And uh, we let P5 be the proj of um, this polynomial ring here, where we have the same set of variables. And on P5, we have an involution, um, which uh, flips the signs of the Y variables. So these three here and does nothing on the X variables. So this involution on P5 uh, will sort of correspond to the, um, the K3 involution uh, for the uh, Enrique surface. Okay, so uh, now basically we have our polynomials from before. Uh, so if we uh, look at the sum like uh, P, PI plus uh, QI, we see that this, um, these uh, quadrics here um, are going to be uh, invariant. Um, so this is uh, invariant under, under this involution. Okay, so it, that's just because, uh, well, the involution does nothing on the, uh, the X variables and then this has degree two in the Y variable. So flipping the signs does nothing. Okay. Uh, yeah, so if you intersect um, three such uh, quadrics, you, you get a K3 surface in P5. You know, intersection of three quadrics in P5, that's, that's a K3 surface. Um, but this K3 surface comes with this uh, involution. Um, and um, one checks that uh, basically um, if, if things are generic, um, this is a free action. So that the fixed locus is, is just given by the two planes where all of the X variables are zero or all of the Y variables are zero. And uh, if you intersect three quadrics in P5, you get a surface which sort of typically is disjoint from these two planes. So in the picture is sort of like this. Okay, but that means that uh, the action is free. So it means that this quotient here is a smooth Enrique surface. Uh, any questions about uh, this construction? Okay. Um, all right, so now at least we know how to construct uh, K3s, uh, sorry, Enrique surfaces. And we basically just do the same thing for um, Enrique surface vibrations. So instead of working in P2 cross P2, we just add a parameter uh, while P1. We take the same sort of matrix, um, but now we, we have some parameters on the, uh, P1 factor. So, so basically we're going to choose uh, PI and PQ as before, but now we're going to impose that they're also linear uh, as polynomials in S and T. So what that means is that these uh, PI uh, polynomials have tri-degree one, two, and zero, and uh, QI have tri-degree one, zero, and two. So the polynomials really look like that. Uh, so here, A, uh, I, and B, I, they're uh, polynomials in the X variables. Uh, so quadratic polynomials. And then you have some S's and T's here. 
Yeah, and yeah, by construction, if you, if you just plug in values from for SSNTs, we have the, the old construction. So this is just an Enrique surface. Um, and basically, what we have then is uh, um, a smooth threefold, and which has a map to P one, just given by the first projection. And the fibers here are Enrique surfaces. Okay, so that's that's a very explicit threefold. I mean, it's given by three equations in P1 cross P2 cross P2. And yeah. Okay, so here are some here are some properties of, of Y. Um, so this threefold has quadratic dimension one. Um, it's simply connected, and there's no torsion in the cohomology. It's just, this should be um, Y. And the Hodge diamond looks like this. Um, I guess the, the only thing that's interesting here is this large number, 26. It means that the Picard number of, of Y is 26. Um, yeah. <laughs> So why, or yeah, let me try to explain this number 26, um, why you have such large Picard number. Okay, so how do we study the geometry of, of Y? Well, the, the geometry of the Enrique surface was, was studied from the geometry of the K3 surface. Um, so basically we do the same thing here. Uh, we start with uh, this uh, complete intersection in P1 times P5. So it's basically just taking the, um, the sum of these uh, polynomials from before, and then, um, yeah, just intersecting in these, uh, these forms. So that's, that's a, this is a K3 vibration. Okay, so remember, that we have this picture that, uh, you know, for, for general choices of these polynomials, this, this thing here will be disjoint from these two planes. Okay, so if you take a one parameter family of, of such K3s, um, this will no longer be true that, uh, I mean, it will happen that sort of finitely many of uh, these uh, K3 surfaces will intersect these two uh, planes. So that means that the action um, of this involution is, is no longer free uh, on, the, on Z0. So to actually get uh, something that we can work with, we have to sort of blow up the fixed points. Uh, and what are the fixed points? Uh, well, basically we have, let me just uh, copy the um, about picture. Okay, so basically we have uh, some some points on P1 and some points on P2 corresponding to this intersection here. Uh, and yeah, we compute that it's actually 12 on each plane. So for each, um, yeah, each point in this intersection, we, we have a fixed point of the involution and we have to blow it up to uh, to get a free action. Uh, but that means that, I mean, we're blowing up lots of points, right? And we're blowing up 12 plus 12, 12 uh, points. So, so we get uh, 24 exceptional divisors. Okay, but at, at least here, um, so here we have this, this involution uh, and then it lifts to this involution on the, on the blow up. Uh, but now the action is free. Now we, we, after the after blowing up, then it's free, and then we can take the the quotient, and and this is the quotient here. So this is how we would like to understand why it's the quotient of this sort of blow up of this K three vibration. But now at least we see that um, see the reason why we had twenty six as a Picard number because we start with something that has Picard number two, namely this C0. 
uh, it has Picard number two by the Lepschitz hyperplane theorem. And then we're blowing up 24 points. So this thing certainly has Picard number six, not 26. And uh, one just checks that this map here just uh, uh, gives you an isomorphism among Picard groups. Okay, so um, yeah, now uh, the trick is to sort of, okay, we have these 24 exceptional divisors, but there's, they come in two groups, right? One for each plane. So each exceptional divisor corresponds to, well, the, the, the exceptional divisor corresponding to the blow up of a point and that point has to lie on, on one of these two planes. So we group them uh, as uh, E11 up to E112, and then the same with uh, the other plane, E21 up to e, E212. And we're basically just going to focus on one uh, plane. So we take these 12 exceptional divisors coming from, from, uh, from that uh, plane. And uh, if you wanna do this very explicitly, um, well, we have, so Y is defined by this matrix. And uh, this divisor here um, is just one of the components of, of that divisor. So, you know, Y is defined by this two by three matrix, um, which has co dimension two. But if you take the um, sum variety given by all of the, well, setting all the P's equal to zero, you get something of dimension three. So you see that this thing here is a divisor on Y. Um, but it, it's not irreducible. It, it really splits into these like 12 uh, planes uh, on Y. Yeah, and the, the claim that we're going to show is uh, the following. So for, for any curve on, on this threefold Y, well, we have a certain congruence between the intersection numbers. So the degree of C over P1. So remember that we're really interested in the degree uh, of, of a curve over P1. And this should be congruent to uh, C times, the, well, the sum of these uh, exceptional divisors modulo two. So we ideally we would like to say that this is an even number. So, um, yeah, we're interested in, in sort of congruences modulo two like this. So this is not uh, yet enough to, to say that it's even, but at least it's, it's congruent to something uh, modulo two. Um, yeah, so it, it gives you some sort of conclusion here, at least that if you have a section uh, of, the, of this uh, Enrique surface vibration, then this section really has to intersect one of these exception divisors. And that's, that's not so obvious, but um, yeah, it follows from, from this because here you would get one and then, yeah, it has to intersect at least uh, one of these. Are there any questions about the construction so far? So again, this Y is a very explicit threefold. It's given by this uh, matrix here. Um, and, uh, and we're trying now to prove a certain congruence um, of intersection numbers uh, for all curves on, on this threefold. Okay, so in fact, uh, this is enough to show that Y fails the integral of Hodge conjecture. Uh, because we have this uh, picture here and um, basically we can construct a, a topological class which which has this property so it, there's a class uh, in h2 so that the degree uh, is one over p1 and it intersects these in, uh, exceptional divisor in zero <laughs> so uh, yeah it, because it violates this in inequality uh, sorry this uh, this congruence here it means that it, it cannot be algebraic. And then to, to prove that such a, a class exists is very easy. You just use the Lefschetz hyperplane theorem. So if you sort of only care about sort of counterexamples to the integral Hodge conjecture, then this is 
I mean, we we have an Enrique surface vibration where uh, where where this conjecture fails. Okay, um, now let, let's actually try to prove this claim here. So we're proving for any curve uh, C uh, in Y, we have this congruence here. So the degree of the curve over P1 should be congruent to uh, C times this uh, divisor modulo two. Okay, so how would you prove something like that? Well, here comes the sort of uh, link to the first lecture. Um, so we're going to use a degeneration argument. So remember that if we have a family over T with a special fiber uh, Y0, then we can define uh, a specialization map between uh, child groups uh, while saying that, well, if I take a very general fiber, I can always specialize curves from the very general fiber to the special fiber. And if, if I suppose that Y um, does not have the, I mean, there's, there's, if you assume that there is a curve on Y that does not um, satisfy the, the above congruence, the limit uh, when you specialize to uh, Y0 would also not um, satisfy the congruence because this is compatible with intersection products. So if we can prove this congruence here on Y0, then we're done. Okay, so now the trick is to find a, a good uh, Y0 basically, or write down a, a useful family. So yeah, the, the actual equations um, are not that exciting, but um, maybe um, I'll say a little bit about it. So. Basically, we're just going to do the uh, the degeneration inside in P1 cross P2 cross P2. We remember that Y is, the, is defined by a two by three matrix. And now we're going to look at a very specific matrix. So these P0, P1, and P2, they're as before, they, they have tri-degree one, uh, zero, two. But now I choose very, very specific uh, polynomials for the QI. So it's a family over a spec of uh, K epsilon. So we're basically going to take the limit as uh, epsilon goes to zero. And if you do that, then um, yeah, you see that these, when you remove these, you, you're basically stuck with, with these squares here. Okay, so that's, that's going to be our family. Uh, and this, this special fiber really looks like this. Uh, so if you take the limit as uh, epsilon goes to zero, then this, the, <clears throat> the special fiber um, has two components. Uh, one is given by just uh, uh, while setting, um, yeah, <laughs> well, basically you get one that looks from, looks like uh, P zero up to, um, pi and then y0 squared, y1 squared, y2 squared. And then you get one extra components like that, like that. So these two components are smooth and they intersect along an Enrique surface, which is a, it's a, it's a fiber of, of this thing here. And the important thing is that all of the planes, um, they all uh, end up on this one component uh, y0. So remember that all of these um, Enrique surface vibrations, they have 24 distinguished planes that are grouped into two. And uh, when you take the limit, um, you basically end up with uh, yeah another 24 planes and they really just end up um, like that, that they, um, they only lie on one of the components. In particular, it only lies in the smooth locus, which is important because we we want to prove this uh, this congruence here on on this union of the, the two components, um, and then therefore we we would like to say that the, this is a, a Cartier device. Okay, now the 
now let's let's prove this congruence here. So so y zero is, is as I said it's defined by this matrix here. It's a very very special two by three matrix where all of these QIs are just uh, squares. And now consider the, um, this D1, just setting the top left uh, entry here e equal to zero. Um, yeah, so I mean, this is a divisor of type one, two, three, uh, one, two, zero. This is how we defined our, our threefold. Uh, and if we, if we have a curve, uh, on y0. The point is that uh, the degree of c over p1, well, it, the degree of c over p1, this is, you know, c times uh, c times 1, uh, 0, 0, right, um, by definition. So 1, 0, 0 corresponds to the, the pullback of O of 1 from the p1 factor. But if we only care about this result module two, we we can just intersect it with D one instead because this has type uh, one two zero instead. Okay, so it means that if I want to understand the degree, I, I'm basically just after after the intersection number of of uh, D one times C. Um, but the the point is that this is a very very special uh, a matrix, and if you if you plug P one as or P zero, can you say again why it's enough to intersect with D one? It's because um, uh, we're we're only interested in uh, the um, result module two, so the degree by definition it it's uh, you know it takes C and intersect with the divisor corresponding to yeah. So th this is uh, C times uh, first projection and pullback of O of one. This is by definition the degree. Um, but uh, if I take the intersection with D one, you basically get the same because we have this two here. Uh, so if you only care about the result module of two, uh, then then there they should be the same. Is that cl clear? Or... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but now comes the point. So uh, if you actually just um, take this P0 and expand or see, see what happens, uh, you see that D1 is not irreducible. D1 is actually, uh, I mean, it has lots of components. So one component is, is just given by setting all uh, like P0, P1, and P2 equal to zero. So we saw earlier that that corresponds to the sum of these exceptional divisors. But there's also one corresponding to um, setting P0 and uh, Y0 equal to zero. But then because you have the square here, you have to put a two here. So this is an interesting relation in the Picard group of, uh, of Y, uh, sorry, Y0. Um, but yeah, if you try now to intersect both sides with C, we see that, uh, yeah, you get exactly the congruence we want because here we have something divisible by two. Yeah, so, we, and here we have the degree and uh, we have module two that this is um, C times this, inter um, this uh, divisor. Yeah, so, I mean, just to sort of summarize, we did generate it into a very special uh, matrix. And then the whole point was that we ended up with these squares here. And one way to sort of formulate this is that when you degenerate, it, it may happen that some Cartier device becomes double on, the, on Y0. And if this uh, becomes double, then certainly intersecting with that divisor. Um, gives you an even number. Okay, um, are there any more questions about this, this uh, sort of congruence here or the, what I just said?
yeah so so far we haven't um um yeah the conclusion here is that we have a threefold where the integral Hodge conjecture fails but so far we haven't really um we haven't proved this statement about uh, every curve having a sort of even degree over p1 and in fact uh, it's not known whether this happens on that uh, threefold here so basically to prove our main result we're going to um, involve a sort of second threefold and, and try to prove it there okay so now come now you can sort of reboot we we're going to uh, try to do the same construction and um, to, to get the, the, the actual theorem that we want, uh, which is the following. So, uh, so X will be a threefold inside P1 cross P2 cross P2. And it's going to be defined by the um, minors of a generic matrix uh, P0, P1, uh, P2, and Q0, Q1, Q2. And uh, now we're going to increase the degree a little bit. So now these PI, uh, they, they will be quadratic in the S and T variables. And the same thing with the QI, which means that the, the PI will have tri-degree two to zero and the QI will have uh, tri-degree two, zero, two. So it's the same as before, but uh, before we had uh, a linear and in, in these uh, variables here. And the main theorem is really that, well, this X here has the property that um, any curve has, has even degree over, um, over this P1. Yeah. Okay, any questions about uh, what we're going to prove? Okay, so again, we're going to use a degeneration argument. That's a little bit similar to what we just did. So here are a few properties of, of X. Um, it's very similar to what we just saw um, for Y. It has Kodar dimension one, it's simply connected and there's no torsion in the cohomology groups. But here at the Hodge diamond um, has larger entries in particular, we see here that the Picard number uh, is uh, is fifty. Okay, um, so how do we see that? Well, well, we we have to sort of do the same thing that we uh, did for y. Um, so there, the point was that we had twelve plus twelve uh, twenty four exceptional divisors that. That gave us twenty six uh, for for the current number. Uh, so on X we have twenty four plus twenty four um, equals uh, forty eight exceptional divisors coming from the sort of fixed points um, in each plane. And we're going to sort of group these together into um, pairs or, or two classes. Uh, one coming from uh, the first plane and the one coming from the second one. So, so we're basically taking our two planes and blowing up 24 plane uh, points in each. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so again, we have, um, we, we consider the first group. So the, let's say the, um, the exceptional devices that come from this plane here. Uh, and, and these are the components where you set all of the PI uh, equal to zero. And let me just sort of say uh, at least what the basic strategy is. Um, so we want, we want to prove the following congruence. So it's a congruence that looks a little bit like what we just uh, had, um, namely the degree or, of, of a curve over C1, no, over P1 is congruent to C times, well, uh, sum of exceptional divisors modulo two. But there's a key difference that we want to prove this for any 12 tuple um, of, of indexes. So before we had um, 
we took all 12. But here we have 24 uh, to choose from. And this is, um, this is a congruence that should hold for any choice of 12 out of these 24 exceptional divisors. Um, so it, it's not just one congruence, it's, it's like a bunch of them. It's, uh, it's 24, choose 12. So there are many congruences. But then if they all um, hold simultaneously, it, it would mean that the intersection number uh, C times, well, all of these intersection numbers have to be equal. Um, and if they're equal, then, well, the degree here um, is then congruent to C times, well, 12 times the, well, <laughs> Well, the degree is equal to well the sum of, of twelve equal numbers, so it would mean that this uh, number here is is even. Yeah, so so that's the strategy. We if we can prove this for any choice of twelve tuples, then then we're done. Then then we get that this uh, number here is even. Okay, so um, basically there are two steps. Uh, First of all, um, uh, basically, it, it, it's enough to prove this congruence here for for some twelve tuple. I mean, basically, there yeah, there's a monodromy argument saying that while well, there are no special choices of twelve out of twenty four, so if you prove it for one choice of twenty four, you can act by um, the monodromy, and then you you get it for it for any choice, basically. Um, what I want to focus on here is, is um, how to prove it for, for some 12 tuple uh, using a specialization argument. Uh, and now, <laughs> yeah, here, here's the degeneration. Uh, all of these like pizza slices, they're, they're planes. Uh, so we start with our um, Enrique surface vibration. It has 24 planes. Uh, these uh, EIs, and then we degenerate it into <laughs> well, this monster here. Um, so it, you you get one component that dominates P1, and you get three other components which uh, map to points on on P1. And the planes really uh, get aligned like this. So these twenty four planes they specialize to well, first of all. Um, four planes here on this R1 component, four planes here on the R2 component, and four planes here on the R3 component. And the, the remaining 12 points, uh, sorry, 12 uh, planes, they, they end up on this component Y. So the, the actual form of the uh, degeneration is not so important. What's important is that the, the picture ends up looking like this. So the, the special fiber is a union of four, four components. Um, okay, so the, the, the trick is, okay, so we have this special fiber and, and this Y here that I've written down is, is, is in fact the same Y as we had before. Uh, you can see that in, in terms of explicit equations. So for, for those 12 planes that end up on Y, we do know that there is a congruence here. Uh, we just proved that. Um, so for any curve uh, on, if, if I start with a curve here, well, it, it will specialize to some, some curve uh, like, like this. Uh, and I already know that we have this uh, congruence here. I mean, it might be that you know the curve ends up having some components here, but then those would not. They, those curves would just map to points, and so they wouldn't contribute to the the degree. Okay, and yeah, that that's the end of the proof basically, um, because we have this the previous uh, congruence on on y. It means that um, yeah. Uh, yeah, we we um, we proved it for a certain choice of twelve of these exceptional divisors, and um, yeah, because this is true for 
for any set of uh, 12 tuples, we get that this uh, number here is, is even. Okay, um, yeah, that's basically what I want to, to say today. So uh, yeah, <laughs> um, maybe I can give a sort of summary of the argument. It's, it, it, I realize that there's a lot of things that go into it, but uh, yeah, basically we started with a very concrete model for the uh, Enrique surface vibrations. And then we, um, we, uh, we studied it using uh, um, a blow up and we found these 12 plus 12 exceptional divisors. And, uh, and those allowed us to prove a certain congruence um, of intersection numbers. Uh, so that was on, on Y. And uh, for, for the congruence, we, we used um, a degeneration argument like, like that into a, <laughs> into these two components. And the, the whole point was that we had these like squares here. Uh, and the threefold uh, that we, that would be the main example was, was co constructed in a similar way, but it had the property that it, uh, it degenerated into this previous threefold plus some other uh, components. And from that we could deduce uh, the, uh, the extra congruences that allowed us to to say that the the degree is even. Okay, so I think I'll stop here. Yeah, um, thanks. <laughs>